After being taken to a hospital for a drug overdose, Anthony Hoover woke up in the middle of having surgeons cutting him open to harvest his organs. Hoover's sister noticed his eyes open and look around with emotion, but she was told that it was just reflexes. The staff told his family that Hoover had given permission for his organs to be donated and that he was declared to be brain dead. But according to a witness, he woke up, began thrashing around, crying, and making attempts to speak, which was ignored by doctors at first. An hour later, the doctors finally stopped because he was showing too many signs of life. Hoover is now recovering from these wounds. This is not an abnormal event. In the medical industry, there is a huge demand for living organs, which is why the term brain dead was invented. The way it occurred was that Christian Bernard did the first heart transplant in South Africa in 1967. Three days later, they did the second heart transplant. And you don't know where that is, but I'll tell you, it was done in Brooklyn, New York. And what, what they did is they cut the beating heart out of a three-day-old baby and transplanted it into an 18-day-old baby. And at the end of their surgeries, a short time after the end of their surgeries, both of those babies were dead. It was illegal, it was immoral. And so they had to do something to make it legal. And so what they did is they set up a committee at Harvard and the committee invented brain death. Uh, the committee did not do studies on dogs or cats or rats. They didn't collect data on human beings. They just invented brain death. It doesn't get better. It keeps getting worse after that. Then uh, uh, a lot of people think that brain death means flat brain waves. They're not even required to do brain wave testing. The way they did that, they, they studied nine patients and two of the nine still had brainwave activity. And then they concluded, no longer is it necessary to look at brainwaves. So it's not required to look for brainwave activity. So when you're doing the, the transplantation on people they say are, are brain dead, they're, they're never all going alive. To... They give paralyzing agents uh, uh, when they take the organs so that they don't move and they don't oh, that's squirm. So horrible. And, and even if they don't move and don't squirm, when they cut on them, their heart rate goes up and their blood pressure mm -hmm. goes up, and, which is the response to pain. And But they can't demonstrate that they have pain. Because they're paralyzed. They medically they're paralyzed. paralyzed them. Yeah. So they can't respond by... That's right. Oh, and, that's horrible. Horrible, horrible. And it gets really bad if you pay attention to it. Apparently, we are having a human organ shortage. The United States has a very severe organ shortage. Every year, there's over 100,000 people waiting for organs, and there's additions on a weekly basis to that list, and fewer people coming off the list. And so we're in this constant state of crisis, trying to find organs for people in need. The demand for young, healthy human organs is much greater than the available supply. And while we are mostly told about the life-saving aspect of organ donation, private industry is hungry for young living bodies too. Medical research personnel call these beating heart cadavers. And according to MIT Technology Review, donated bodies are powering gene-edited organ research. As more and more young people overdose on fentanyl, the human organ business gives thanks. An unexpected silver lining to the epidemic of drug overdose deaths. Drug overdoses are now one of the leading causes of death in organ donors, especially among young people. Drug overdoses have spiked since the opioid epidemic started sweeping the nation. And health experts say the only silver lining has been the increase in life-saving organs for transplants. Organ donors who have died from drug overdoses have increased by 500%. 500%, that's huge. That's huge. A trend they really started to notice four years ago. Classen said it started in New England, spread through Appalachia, then to the upper Midwest, now claiming the lives of those all across the country. 